Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this review for the new or the latest Psychic Awakening book uh, from Games Workshop, War of the Spider. Uh, so uh, in this video it's going to be like a tactica and review. Uh, we'll take a look at the Imperial Agents, so that's your assassins, we'll see how good they are here. Uh, check out GamerFigures.com, discount 40k and other gaming systems available from them, the link for them is in the video description below. Um, but uh, in this video here, it'd be like a tactical review, so we'll go through the tactics. If I had some assassins, what options would I go for? Which assassin would I choose? Uh, they've appeared a few times on the channel, pretty powerful already. So surely not any better than what they already are, but we'll see. Uh, here, check out the previous video, we've already looked at Adeptus Custodes. They've done okay, but I think other factions have fared better so far. So, Imperial... Agents. Hmm. It looks like a Death Guard here, but it's not. The agents are buried in amongst them. On the board here. Yeah. That's the re-sculpt models. Games Workshop produced in plastic. Very nice. Okay, so execution force. This section contains all the data sheets and stratums and so on. Um, so the following abilities are common to Officio Assassinorum units. Uh, so, Agent of the Imperium. If your army is battle forged, you can include one Agent of the Imperium in each Imperium, excluding Fallen Patrol, Battalion and Brigade Detachment in your army, without those units taking up slots in those detachments. The inclusion of an Agent of the Imperium unit does not prevent other units from their detachment from benefiting from detachment abilities. So, Chapter Tactics, Defenders of Humanity, and so on and so on. It does not prevent other units from your army benefiting from abilities that require every model in your army to have that ability. Right, so just clarifying that. An, eight, an agent of the Imperium unit, including the patrol, battalion, or brigade detachment in this manner, is ignored for any rules that state all units in detachment, so on and so on. Execution force. If your warlord has the Imperium keyword, excluding fallen, you can include the this unit in your army as part of a vanguard detachment, even if that detachment contains no HQ units. If you do so, that detachment's command benefits are changed to none, and its restrictions are changed to this detachment cannot include the same data sheet more than once. And then independent operative. This model can never have a warlord trait. During deployment, you can set this model up in concealment instead of placing it on the battlefield at the end of any of your movement phases, which at the moment it's turned two onwards. This model can reveal its position. Set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from enemy models. I take it that's the role that it's turned to on which you reveal. And then lightning reflexes, you do get the four plus invun save. Uh, the Clydus, Selexus, Eversaw, and Vindicare Assassins are all 95 points each, and that includes all of your war gear. Okay, it's so nicely just tucked below 100 points for these. And the models are great. I I don't know, they're all very nice. Do you like the Vindicare? The Eversaw's very cool. 
Mm. Okay, fascinating stuff. So we'll take a look at the Vindicare Assassin first of all. It's power level five uh, here. So I think the stat line may well be different for each of these. We'll see. Uh, movement seven. Weapon skill and ballistic skill two plus, strength four, toughness four, five wounds, five attacks, leadership nine, and a six plus save. Really are taking this guy as, as a super sniper. So we're looking to see how good his firepower is. You know, and Games Workshop, they didn't improve the rules. If you're gonna take this model and it's just gonna pick off wounds here and there, is it really worth it? You want something that's gonna blow the head off some enemy character in one round of firepower. So he's, he's armed with an Existus well, Exodus pistol, range 12, pistol 1, strength 4, minus 3, d3 damage. Resolve an attack made with this weapon. An, uh, an invun saving throw cannot be made. Attacks made with this weapon uh, wound infantry units on a 2 plus. So great, you can pull it out in close combat, ignoring invun saves. Brilliant. Uh, the Exodus rifle, range 72. Heavy 1, strength 5, minus 3, d3 damage. Resolve an attack made with this weapon. An invun save cannot be made. Attacks made with this weapon. Wound infantry units on a 2 plus. So it's, it is fantastic. It's really good. And then blind grenades. Range 12. Grenade D6. Uh, this weapon does not inflict any damage. Do not make any wound rolls. Instead, if unit is hit by any blind grenades, subtract one from all hit rolls for attacks made by the unit until the end of the turn. So just a bit of protection. So you need 4 plus invun save. Minus one to hit rolls for blind grenades. He's not the greatest in close combat, so he's just going to try and protect himself. Maybe just use his pistol to try and fend off enemies in close combat. Agent of the Imperium, Execution Force, Independent Operative, Lightning Fast, or Lightning Reflexes. So, his firepower is okay at the moment, but it's not utterly deadly. But you, what you get here is dead shot. Attacks made by this model are obviously going to be... Yes, of course. Stratagems as well, so bear that in mind. Uh, Deadshot. Attacks made by this model can target a character, even if it's not the closest enemy unit. In addition, unmodified wound roll of a 6 for an attack with an Exodus pistol or rifle. Change the damage characteristic of that weapon to D6 instead of D3. So, pretty good. Uh, faultless aim. Attacks made with ranged weapons by this model always hit on a 2+, plus if this model did not move this turn. Uh, six is still for Overwatch, so he's going to ignore your modifiers and so on. All that shenanigans it just hits on a two if he sits still. So uh, then, headshot if after resolving an attack with an Exodus pistol or rifle by this model, a model in an enemy unit lost any wounds as a result of that attack but was not destroyed. So, character for example, you try and pick them off five wounds, you picked off two wounds or three wounds. Uh, it's not destroyed by 1d6, and a 3 plus that model suffers a mortal wound. And if that model is not destroyed, you roll one more dice. Then it's a 4 plus, it's a mortal wound, and then it's just keep rolling uh, until it's failed. Increasing the result required by 1. So I guess you reach 6 plus, and after that it becomes a 7 plus, and then it's not rollable. I think it doesn't stop at a certain rate, I could imagine. That's the ability to pick off a character. Now what you need to bear in mind is you're ignoring invun saves. And you're wounding on a 2 plus, yeah. No invun saves allowed, yes, this is deadly. Spy Mask, resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon by this model. The target does not receive the benefit of cover to its saving throw. Fine. So, you know, he's deadly. I remember, was it against the Thousand Suns picking off my sorcerers? They had five wounds each. Um, and the headshot ability, ignoring my invun saves, twos to wound, even minus three, <laughs> pretty good. Yep, nice. And stealth suit, resolve an attack made with a ranged weapon against this model, minus one to hit roll. If this model is in a terrain feature, subtract, subtract two from the hit roll instead. Nightmare. They're a nightmare to deal with. And if, if they're well, I think the key for these is positioning. If they are well positioned on the battlefield, which takes a fair bit of effort to get it right, but if they're well positioned where you've got a good field of fire, they're very difficult to access and get close to an ambush and so on, then this one's a nightmare to deal with. And if you ignore them, just give them the sniper free range just to pick on stuff. Yep. You can really cut your options there, you restrict you when one of these is operating on the table. And it's good because you know, someone says, uh, I, I hear a list, 
someone has, they're reading it out, they're going to play a game, and they say, oh yeah, and I've got an assassin. It's like, oh no. <laughs> so, which is, yeah, that's the correct reaction. They're meant to be something that's uh, a thing of dread here that's been sent in to deal with the enemy. Uh, power level 5 for the Kaleidos Assassin, next. Stat line is the same. Equipped with uh, Neural Shredder, Phase Sword, Poison Blades. So Neural Shredder then, uh, this is weapon, hit range 9 Assault 1. Resolve an attack with this weapon. If a hit roll is scored, do not make a wound roll, instead roll 3d6. If the result is equal to or greater than the target unit's highest leadership characteristic, it suffers d3 mortal wounds. So it's alright, it's okay. Uh, the Phase Sword. Strength user, which is strength 4, A minus 3, 2 damage, resolve an attack with this weapon, and invon saves cannot be made. Okay, and then poison blades is strength 2, it's a melee weapon, A minus 1, 1 damage, when the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack with this weapon. Attacks made with this weapon wound on a 3 plus regardless, uh, unless the target is a vehicle unit. So again, that's okay. So... Yeah, the abilities are okay. The stat line is all right, nothing too scary. Uh, the usual rules, then uh, poly polymorphine. During deployment, you can set up this model in disguise. Instead of setting it up on the battlefield, at the end of any of your movement phases, this model can revert to its true form. Set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than D6 plus 3 away from enemy models. For example, if you roll 4, the model can be set up, set up anywhere that is more than 7 inches away from an enemy model. Okay, uh, and then Reign of Confusion. This model can shoot and charge in a turn in which it fell back. And then Reign of Confusion. If you have any models with this ability in your army, then on the first battle round, roll 1d6 each time your opponent spends command points. To use a stratagem on a 4+, plus, your opponent must spend an additional stratagem, uh, or else it has no effect. This ability cannot affect stratagems used before the battle. So they're still right. So the Vindicator is scarier. We'll choose that one uh, over the Kaleidos. Now, I probably like this model the most, the Evasaur Assassin. It's famous for the, the artwork that goes all the way back with these. Remember, looking at White Dwarfs, no, when I was getting into 40k. Uh, about 20 years ago or so, and I really love the artwork for these. So, stat line is different. This guy's more equipped for close combat, I think. Extra wound. So six wounds, extra attacks, six attacks as standard here. So, um, Executioner Pistol, Neuro Gauntlet, Power Sword, and Melter Bombs. Guys, a real uh, close range nightmare. Fantastic model, really cool. So Executioner Pistol, range 12. Uh, pistol 4, strength 4 minus 1, 1 damage. You can reroll wound rolls for attacks made with this weapon that target infantry units. Uh, the Neuro Gauntlet. As a melee weapon, plus one strength, so strength five, eight minus one, one damage. You can reroll wound rolls for attacks made with this weapon. So generally all round okay. Power sword, use rolls for that, eight minus three, and then melter bombs. Range four, grenade one, strength eight minus four, d6 damage. And then you can reroll wound rolls for attacks made with this weapon at target vehicles. So, uh, usual rules, then bio meltdown. If this model is destroyed, before removing it from the battlefield, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 6 inches of this model. On a 4+, plus, it's d3 mortal wounds. So he is designed to get stuck in. It takes a bit of bravery, you know, you've paid the points out for this model, and you're going to throw him in amongst the enemy to do as much damage and cause as much trouble as possible. And that takes a bit of skill, actually, to get that timed right and lined up properly. Um, and by all means, leave your own comments. If you're... If you use assassins, what's your favourite that you like to have and why? And what army does it fit into? What's the battlefield role uh, that it has? But um, Sentinel Ray, each time an enemy unit falls back whilst within an inch of this model, before moving any models, this model can shoot as if it were a shooting phase. These attacks must target the unit that is falling back. So he gets to shoot before you leave combat. Interesting. And then Friends on. When making a charge roll for this model, roll 3d6 rather than 2d6. In addition, add 2 to the model's attacks characteristic if it's charged or made her a convention, so you're on 8 attacks here. And then killing rampage, each time, model in this, uh, each time model in an enemy unit is destroyed as a result of an attack made by a melee weapon by this model, you can immediately make one additional attack with a melee weapon this model is equipped with against the same unit. These attacks 
cannot generate further attacks. In addition, this model can consolidate up to 6 inches instead of 3. So yeah, just tons of attacks all over the place. Great against hordes and lightly armed infantry units. Hmm. Okay. And then this one next, the Selexus Assassin uh, here. Drops uh, an attack, so it actually goes to four attacks instead of the usual five. Uh, it's equipped with the Animus Speculum and Psych Out Grenades. So we've seen Psych Out Grenades already. Animus Speculum, range 18, assault D3, strength 5, minus 4, 1 damage. Whilst the enemy psycho units within 18 of the bearer, changes weapons type characteristic to assault D6 instead of D3. Usual special rules. Uh, then. Abomination. This model can never be targeted or affected by psychic powers in any way. So you can't smite him to get rid of him. Uh, psychic units within 18 inches of the Selexus Assassins must subtract two from psychic tests and deny the which tests they take. Interesting. And then life drain. Resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by this model. A saving throw cannot be made unless it's an in one saving throw. And then Ethereum. Resolving an attack that targets this model. The attack... The attacking model is treated as having weapon skill and ballistic skill of 6 plus. That's right, I've, I've come up against him before. Diff very, very difficult to get rid of. You can't smite him out, which is a great way of getting rid of characters, and he's very hard to hit. <laughs> very difficult. Very, very difficult to get rid of. <clears throat> Psychic Assassin. Tax made by this model can target a psycho character, even if it's not the closest enemy unit. In addition, this model can shoot with its psycho grenades in the same phase which it shoots with its um, animus speculum. But uh, a nightmare can, uh, can end up diverting tons of energy and effort to try and get rid of this lone model. So, uh, my rating is the Vindicate, then this guy, then this one, uh, and then the. Kaleidos last of all. That's, that's the order I would put if you, you can obviously leave your own comments and feedback. So, stratagems next here. So, two command points. Shadow assignment. Use the stratagem before the battle begins. If your army includes exactly one officio assassinorum unit, remove that unit from the army and then add one officio assassinorum unit from your choice to your army. Uh, the unit that is removed does not count as being destroyed for any rules purposes. Like other units that are added to your army, this new unit does not cost any reinforcement points, even in a match to play game. Okay, interesting. So you can swap one out and have one in. Turbo Penetrator, and I've heard this before. Okay, this is to help out the Vindicare Assassin. One command point use a stress from any phase when a Vindicare Assassin model from your army makes an attack uh, with the rifle or the pistol. The targets an opponent's that targets an opponent's vehicle or monster unit. If a hit is scored, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds, and the attack sequence ends. If this stratagem is used, then the headshot ability does not apply to that attack. So just mortal wounds come through. Handy for finishing off targets like monsters and vehicles. Uh, priority threat neutralized. Zero command points. Use this stratagem in any phase when a character model from an enemy unit is destroyed by an officio assassin or model from your army. You gain one command point or two command points if the character was the warlord. You can use a stratagem once for each enemy character model destroyed. So you can harvest command points now. Pretty good. Acrobatic. This is for the Kaleidos Assassin. It's one command point. Use it in the movement phase. Uh, that model can advance and charge this turn. In addition, to the start of the next battle round, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target the selected model. Okay. Pariah's Gaze. One command point. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase. When you select a Selexus Assassin model to shoot with, to the end of that phase, change the damage characteristic of that model's Animus Speculum to D3. Just as you need it, you can use that stratagem, that's pretty helpful. Double kill. One command point. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. After a Vindicare Assassin model from your army shoots, that model can shoot an additional time this phase. And it must be against a different target. That is very, very, very useful. Really good. So one shot per game, uh, one shot per turn is a chance to fire twice. Still, the Vindicare Assassin's the best here, I think. So, I, I, I think it's the the unit that my Thousand Sons army fears the most is a nightmare. 
Supreme Deception. Two command points. Use this stratagem at the start of any battle round after the first. Choose one Kaleidos Assassin from your army. This unit can be one. Uh, this can be one that is not on the battlefield. That model's Reign of Confusion ability is considered to be in effect at the end of that battle round. You can only use this stratagem once per battle. Uh, Hyper Metabolism. One command point. Use a stratagem at the start of any phase. Select an Evasaur Assassin model from your army. At the end of that phase, roll 1d6 each time that model loses a wound, excluding those lost as a result of mortal wound. And a 4 plus the wound is not lost, so 4 plus for no pain. Pretty good. Just as you, Again, just as you need it. You can play that. Uh, Stim Overload, two command points. <coughs> Use this stratagem at the end of the fight phase. Select one Evasaur Assassin model from your army. And fought this phase. That model can fight an additional time. Uh, after that model has fought again, that this phase, roll 1d6, and a 1, 2, or 3 takes some auto wound, but it may well be worth it. Soul Horror, two command points. Use your stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one selects this assassin model from your army. Enemy units within three inches of that model cannot be chosen to fight with this phase until after all of units have done so. Even if they've charged, if one of those units that has that ability allows them to fight this phase, they instead fight in the phase as if they did not have that ability. So. Yeah, it's helpful enough trying to protect these assassins. You want to get the most that you can out of them. You're not dying on turn one or getting brought down too easy. So any kind of help that comes through in these stratagems just gives you a little bit more of an edge to try and stay alive. But I, I faced a few of these before. And I remember coming up against the, the Eversaw. And it's an absolute nightmare. Absolute nightmare to try and get rid of. No, no, it wasn't him. It's sorry, it's here. It's this guy. This is the one that was very difficult to get rid of. Yeah, the six is to hit. Ridiculous. Absolute nightmare. And you couldn't smite him. So, you know, for disruption and for distraction. Fantastic. So, there they are. Fully updated. New stratagems. So, really good. So, that's the review then uh, for these assassins. The comment section, do you think this has been good? Do you think the updates have been good? There's been improvements or not? Um, leave your own opinion. Maybe list in order your favourite by choice, which you would take to the battlefield first and which you would leave at the, the bottom of the list. I'll sort of give them the idea of which ones I'd go for. But they're beautiful models. Very, very nice. And uh, great to see the rules fully updated. That's the review then for the Assassins. Uh, check out GamingFigures.com. You discount 40k and other uh, gaming systems available from them. Uh, keep a look out for uh, the other reviews for this War of the Spider uh, Psychic Awakening book. Check out the previous reviews and hope to make more reviews in the future. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.